is a just a single beam program. Uh, you have access to all these programs ran. Concept is uh, design of floor slabs. So they've got a whole kind of suite of software. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the tricky part once you get a website set up and finding the program. That screwed me up. I had, to, I had a problem with RAM in this one. <coughs> okay, so once you get the program downloaded, you're going to see an icon that looks like this guy right here. And that's what you're going to use to start it. I've clicked on that, and this is the AMD theme. Now, I want to make a couple comments, just an overall view of the program. It's a 3D building program, so uh, I had someone here try to use it and design one column, and I said, you can't do that. You've got to have at least three columns and a floor in a building, okay? So it's a 3D program. The basic steps is when you open a new project, and then you're going to go through some criteria step. You know, uh, you don't have to write this down necessarily. We'll go through the steps. But you're going to set up some criteria up there in the upper left corner of that screen. You know, how you want the program to work for you. And then you're going to use uh, something called the modeler part of the program to model your building. So you're Floors, your beams, columns. Uh, the nice thing about RAM is let's say you're doing a, what are you guys doing, a five story building? If your floor is two, three, and four, and five are all exactly the same, you only have to model it once. You don't have to model every floor. You can model a typical level and assign that typical level to to every floor. We didn't wait for you. So yeah, no, it's good. My <laughs> FEMA meeting went long. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So, if you have a floor that's different from another floor, then you need to model that. But you can copy up the data that you model on the first floor up to the next floor, and then just modify whatever's changed. So it's kind of easy that way. Uh, once you get it modeled, uh, then you, you go to the beam design module, and that's where you click a button and voila, every beam on your model is designed for you. If you're in steel, it'll do them all at once in about two or three seconds, or depending on how big your model is. And then we want to design columns. So there's a column module. You go to that, hit the button. And if, uh, the program's really set up mostly for steel design. Um, but it, it will do, uh, you can model concrete, you can model, uh, to a certain extent, wood, wood stuff. But it won't automatically design the members in concrete or wood. But steel, it will do. And the last one's called the frame module. And that's the one that does your seismic uh, well, force resisting design. So equivalent we'll have a force procedure or a dynamic uh, low response spectrum analysis. One nice just trick is if you right click anywhere, it takes you back to the previous menu you were on. So that's kind of Anyway, uh, anyway. All right, 
so what I've done is I double clicked on my icon and this is the first thing that comes up. It tells you license restrictions. You can just hit okay. So the, uh, the one thing that I think is really helpful is up at the help menu up here, there's a tutorial week wiki. Pull that up. Um, when we get new engineers at our company, we just, we tell them to go do this tutorial. And once they go through that, they get pretty good at, you know, being able to use RAM efficiently, so. comes out that has a lot of disclaimers, blah, blah, but somewhere down here we can. This table of contents, it has a link. So there's an overview, there's a manager tutorial. So it talks about the different modelers, Steel beam design, steel column. And somewhere down here, you can uh, continue to the RAM manager tutorial. And then it walks you through step by step of uh, how to work the program. And if you go through there, you'll end up designing a multi story modeling and designing a multi story building. So it's, it's a pretty good thing. It does take some time to go through, but uh, last year, the, I think the students who started and took that time really got off to a quick start when they got to modeling. So. All right, so that's the help. So here we are. We have an untitled model. The first step is let's, we have to open the project, give it a name and a file. So I'll click on new up here in the corner. And I don't know what you want to, you, know, you can put it anywhere you want. So I'll do a data. I'm going to put it somewhere about now. Okay. There's some dust in the file. There. This is where you, um, online they can keep projects or something, so I don't use this, so I just get out of this. And now we're ready to start, and let me get this one more step. All right, so kind of you want to get up upper left corner criteria first of all. Anybody running this and are you up with me? You're okay. Anybody else still trying to get to where we're at here? So let's look at this drop down menu under criteria. And member loads, click on that. And so on the upper left code for live load reduction, you can have a general method that's in the IDC, or you can pick their alternate method. It has a bunch of different codes. Uh, you may see that's the old United States code that's gone. Uh, Southern Building Code and Boca used to be codes in the U.S. They're gone now. Uh, Canada, uh, I think this is the British code, Euro code, New Zealand and Australia, China, Hong Kong in India, so this is an international program. On the upper right, uh, depending on if you got snow loads, you can 
designed for the snow loads or roof loads. And you can see the blue dots are default parameters. Uh, roof loads are reducible or unreducible. Number of stories for live load reduction and reports of live loads that you want to provide for each other. I usually don't mess with this one. All right, so we didn't make any changes to get out of that. Next one is self weights. So the nice thing about this program is it'll calculate the self weights of your beams for you. So you can click on dead loads, calculate the self weights of beams, columns, walls, uh, slab, and deck. So really, if you define us, if you have a metal deck, concrete fill, uh, you can let the program do the calculations. I don't personally do that. I take off slabs and deck, and I do that myself. So this left side is for gravity loads. This is for masses, if you're massing up a building. So if I put in my deck slab load like is what I like to do, then I, I, it, will count, it will mass it out because I'll put it in as a mass as opposed to and a load. So I, I'm going to click these. So that's what I do. But I let it calculate the weight of my walls. And those would be like walls that we define. So it'll, it'll figure out all the weights of your structure for you. Questions? Okay. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, master steel table. Um, I don't mess with that. Uh, it's set up for the uh, United States AISC tables. So I don't go there. Design steel tables. Um, if you want to have some special beams or something, if you plate some beams, you can set up your own special tables. Um, same thing for concrete. So. Other than these first two, I don't mess around with the rest of this. Alright, so we've got a new project open. We've checked criteria. Now we're going to go down to the modeler. And that's either this model button up here, or you can click this model button over here, either one. And it pulls up the modeler, and there's nothing there. The first thing you have to do is to find a grid system for your building. Grids for all your column lines. So how big do you want to make the building? Anybody got a size of the Five. building? How much? Five. How, how wide? How? 45 by 55. That's a big module? Yes. How, how long is the building overall? 300 feet? 200 feet? Sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is, if some of you have a building that's a certain size, I, I'll model it for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> what is the design thing up to the 3,000 square foot building? I, I don't know what I don't know what your assignment is. Three hundred thousand square foot. Three thousand square foot floor plate. So that's three hundred by a hundred. Do that. All right, so we clicked on this, do this kind of grid button up there. It's kind of the only button that's active. So we got to define a grid system. So uh, we have to give it a label. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. You can have multiple grid systems. So you can have a rectangular grid system and a circular grid system and a grid system on a diagonal. You can do all sorts of grid systems if you want, but let's, we'll keep it simple. We'll call it grid. 
So we'll add it. You can, if you got an X and Y offset or a rotation. So if you had a multiple grids, you could offset a grid and you could rotate it. But let's go orthogonal and just hit add. And then we'll edit this grid system and assign some grids. So orthogonal grids will start out with the uh, X grids or highlighted up there on the top of the right box. So you want to call these letters or number grids? Or do you care? Numbers. Numbers. So we'll start with grid one. It's X coordinate. We'll put the origin in the lower left corner. So it's at coordinate zero. And you want to do 30 foot spacings? There's a nice bay. So we can generate grids, 30 foot on center. And we want to generate what? 10 of them. So they give us 30 feet. And you can hit automatic ascending. So it'll go one, two, three, four up there. Uh, it'll put a level on the I end of the grid, and we're working in units of feet. So hit the add button. And there's all the 30 foot grid A's 1, 2, 11. Okay, we need the Y grids now, right? We've got X grids. Let's go over to up here to this Y grid. And we'll use letters this time, A. Start out at zero, that'll be A down in the lower left corner. And let's see, 300 by 100. Yeah. So that'll go 20 foot bays this time, or 25 foot bays? 25, all right. So zero, our grid spacing will be 25 feet. And this time we want to do four bays. We'll go automatic ascending. We can just hit add. There they are, hit OK. And then we can hit OK to get out of it. So we defined a grid system. We could define another grid system if we wanted. If you had a If we had a building that, you know, say we had, you know, part of it was like this and we gridded it out and then we had another wing that came off like this, we could set up another grid system for this wing and if we had, you know, some radial grids like the Starship Enterprise, we did last year, you could set up another radial grid system. You can have multiple grid systems, but we only need one. So we'll go OK. And then we have to select which grid system we want for the particular floor we're going to model. So now we go to this next button with the check mark on it. going to go to layout first here. We're going to go to select a type of layout and we're going to call this the typical floor. So we're going to model our typical floor and if every floor is the same we just have to model one of them. So I'll title it, I'll add it, and I will select it. And now I get the red check mark on the grid. That means I'm going to select the grid system for this typical floor. And since I only have one, it's going to be easy. So we'll click that icon. And down here, we're going to select 
that grid system and did okay. So there's the bids for our building. Questions up to this point? Yeah. How I did what? How you made the grid. How I made the grid? Yeah. Sure. So you can hit layout and go to grids here. Create or edit. Or you can hit this grid button, this icon here. Either way it gets you there. Go to grids. We can create another grid system. So I can add a second grid system, and we could offset it. I don't know. 300 feet, 100 feet up, and we could rotate it at 45 degrees if we want. So we've, we've entitled our grid system, and then if we want to edit it, we Highlight that grid system and hit edit grids. And that's how we create, we use this dialog box to create that grid system. So up here where it says X grids, we're in the X grid box. So we give it our X grid a label. <coughs> And you can you can identify each grid individually, or you can have the program generate them. So if we want them at 20 foot bases and four more grids, you just hit add, and then we'll stick them in there. And then click on the Y grids. Some good label on fifty. We're spacing at twenty and four. Click it up. Once you got them defined, then you just hit OK and get back out of it. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now I've got two different grid systems. If I want to add that second grid system to my model, I could, but we don't want to. We're going to make a rectangular building. All right. Uh, we want to. Are we going to do steel or concrete? Steel. Steel. Concrete. 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 All right. I love you guys. <laughs> 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 That's my second. We'll do the first floor in concrete. No foot steel. I'll put steel on top of it. How's that? Yeah. So we're going to see all of it? Sure. All right. So up here in the upper left, right now we're modeling in steel. So we have to change it to concrete. So we'll go down to concrete. You can do steel joists. Uh, you can do uh, C beams, I think, or castellated beams. Those are the beams that they take a wide plane beam and then they cut these diagonal holes in it like this. And they cut it down here somehow and they offset this thing but you are we good mm -hmm. sorry you end up with a so cut it like this I can get it here. they cut it like this then they offset it and you end up with a beam that's deeper 
and that has holes that look like this running down the length. So you got these are openings in the web. So you end up taking a wide flange beam, cutting it, shifting it over so that this lines up with that, you get a deeper beam and with holes in it so you can run mechanical piping through. The beam is deeper, it's stiffer, better deflection characteristics, and that's called a castellated beam. So it's hence uh, some designers use it. Okay, so we're going to select concrete. And now we want to put some columns in our building, right? And we'll put a column on every grid line. 30 by, we got 30 by 25, that's reasonable. Not the greatest layout in concrete, but okay. So we can go to layout up here and go to columns. Uh, we're gonna have a problem here. First of all, we gotta define a column size for concrete. So what size column do you guys want to use for gravity? 36 by 24. 30, so that's pretty big. How about 24 by 24? Oh, I like that one. All right, 24 by 24. So we'll go property table and we'll go to column sections. And we'll go, and I like to label them like this, 24 by 24. That way when I, we put the size on the screen, it tells me exactly what size it is. If I called it a typical gravity column, I don't know what size I've modeled. Uh, they've got some crack section factors. When you model concrete, you have to assume it's going to crack and it's got uh, properties that aren't, uh, it's not fully elastic. So these are the default crack section factors out of the ACI code. So I just leave the column, the crack section factors alone. Uh, we've got a rectangular or a circular column. We're gonna go rectangular or square. And H and V are the sizes of the column. So we're gonna put in 24 in inches and 24. And we'll hit add. So we've got that size column. Now let's do lateral columns, and I like your 24 by 36 for a lateral column. That's a good size. So let's do another column, and we'll go 24 by 36 this time. Uh, B is the smaller dimension, H is the larger dimension, so we'll put in 36 for H. And then we'll leave the crack section factors alone, let the default. Whoops, sorry, I screwed that up. Back to the property table. 24 by 36. Each is 36. 24. And hit add. And so there's our two columns. Okay. Question. All right. So let's let's put all the. What are we gonna do? Concrete bottom frame. All right. So we'll put the lateral columns on all the perimeter, and we'll put the gravity columns on the inside. Okay. So go to layout. Columns. Add on grid. So every grid intersection that we um, fence, we're going to add a column. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select standard column. And we already, uh, it's a gravity column. It's not a lateral column. Uh, unit weight, 145. And for self weight, it uses 150. It will use the 145 for the modulus of elasticity. If 
calculation the 150 and as soon as it has some rebar in there it weighs a little more. Uh, Poisson's ratio 0.2 is good, the rest of these are good. So we can add them one at a time or we can fence them. Fencing is much faster. So every interior column intersection, I'm going to left click, hold the button down, fence it in, and there they are. Now we have to define what size of column now because the program doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So for concrete, you got to size them. For steel, you just got to put them in and the, code, uh, the program will calculate them. The size is 40. Concrete, he doesn't know how to do that. So we'll go out layout, columns, and somewhere down here there's a sign size, right down here at the bottom. So we're going to make these a 24 by 24. We're going to pick that size. And again, we'll fence it. And that will put in a 24 by 24 size on all those columns. And these are showing up as kind of bluish. Blue and ram is gravity. If it shows up as red, it's going to be a lateral column. So let's put in our lateral columns now. And we'll make this bay all lateral columns, strong axis up and down, and we'll do the 10 over there, or 11 the same way. And so that's two, four, five, two, four, oh yeah, two, four, five. Okay. And we'll put, I don't know, five bays on each side of the frame. So the layout, columns, add on grid. This time we're going to make them lateral columns. And since I'm going to put them on lines 1 and 11, I want the strong axis going up and down. So we're going to select that orientation and then go to fence. And now you can see they're outlined in red, which means that's going to be a lateral force resisting element here. Do the same thing at grid 11. Again, you can right click. It takes you back to the same menu, same place. So I can click fence, and that's a fast way to get back to it. And we'll do the same thing at grid 11. Okay, so let's put some ductile frames on our grids A and E in the other direction. So again, you can right click to get back to that same menu. But this time, we want the strong axis going the other way, right? Strong direction. So let's click, select that box. We're still lateral, and we'll fence, and we'll stick, uh, What's that? Yeah, two, four, five, two, four, five. We'll put five bays, four bays of frame over there, and four over here or something. Yeah, let's go five. Those are longer bays, so they're not going to be as quite as, they're going to be a little more flexible. You might need more bays in there x direction and the y direction because we've got shorter days over here. We'll see. Okay, so I forgot to add one up here so I can right click and I can click single and click on that grid and it'll stick another one in for me. So either way is what you're doing. Okay, so now we need to size all these columns. So back to layout, columns, assign size, and this time we're going to make them the bigger ones, the 24 by 36, and we'll fence them. And fence every line. So left click and hold, left click and hold. All right. 
Okay, so we're still missing some columns over here, aren't we? So let's put those in. Those will be gravity columns, so we'll go back and do our 24 squares again. So again, uh, you can click layout up here, or you can click uh, this column button here, either one works. This button selects columns, now it's highlighted. Now we can go over to this button, which is the on grid button. And click there. We're gonna go back to gravity columns, and we don't care which way they're oriented because we're gonna make them 24 squares anyway. So we'll select fence, and we'll stick them over here where we don't have them. All right, so now we've got columns on all our grids. Questions? Yeah. Um, what if you like select the wrong size? How do you go back and change it or? Yeah, you just go back and reassign the size over. Oh, okay. Okay, so I still haven't assigned the size mm -hmm. for these. Uh, I can go back to layout, assign size, or this button over here that has the W12, which shows kind of a size button, you can select that. It'll do the same thing, take us to the same thing. 24 square, I just put these guys in. So I gotta make sure I get those. So now I'm gonna hit the save button here just so that if something happens, I don't lose my data. Good idea to hit that every now and then. All right, we got columns. One level of columns so far. <laughs> you guys want to put some beams in now? Yep. Okay. All right, we know we're going to need lateral beams, so we need to figure out a size for those. Uh, since we have a 24 inch width of column here, Contractors like to have a 24 inch wide beam because the forming is nice. So let's pick a 24 by a beam. Eight. Eight inches? Uh, 18. 18. Keep going. 56. Uh, okay, that's <laughs> uh, 36, 42. 48, 48, 48, all right. So we're gonna go back up to property table. <coughs> now we gotta define some beam sections. So we're gonna go uh, 24 by 48. Just, you can put any name in there you want. And we've got depth, 48 inches. Width 24. And again, it has crack section factors which affect the stiffness of the building. These are from the ACI code, their default values, and I just leave them in there. So we'll add this one, and we're going to need some. Uh, you want to have, what about the gravity system? You want to have some beams in the gravity through a flat plate? Put some gravity beams in, just to see how it works. So we'll do a one-way slab. So let's go the short direction up and down, and we'll make these somewhat smaller, 24 by 36. So let's add a 36 inch beam here, and we'll change the depth, and we'll hit add. So we've got two beams. All right, so we gotta put those in. Let's put in our lateral beams, which go in between the lateral columns. So we're gonna, we can select this button now, beam layout, or we can go layout beams, either way. And again, we have an add-on grid. 
and we want to make them lateral beams. Got some default values here, which I kind of leave out. Normal weight concrete, plastic modulus is a calculated value. So there's not really much else to do here, so we're going to fence them. And notice how they turn up red. That means that's a lateral beam in there. And put in the gravity beams. They will show up as blue, which we'll do right now. So I'm, I've got this beam icon highlighted. I'll do it the other way. And I go over here, this button is add on grid. And these are gravity beams. And we'll fence those in. And then we fence each line. But I'll see how they turn up blue. Should hint that they're a gravity beam. And since we're doing a one-way slab, we'll need them all just on the numbered grid. Okay, now we need to size these beams. So we can go over to this assign size button here, or we can hit layout, beams, assign size way down here at the bottom. And 24 by 48, that was our frame beam. So we'll start with those. We can fence them. Fence all the lateral beams. Like that. And if you want to see the size, there's a show size button up here, right here. And if you turn it on and you click this little ruler over here, you can have the program show you what size they are. That's kind of nice. All right. Now we can size the gravity beams. Layout, beams, assign size. Or I could just go over here since I'm already in the beam button over here. Go over here to this button. 24 by 36, we fence these. And now I can fence this whole bay and get all of those. I can screw up and fence it like this. And now it changed my, got all these inside ones, but I also fence these. So now I changed my lateral beams to 36s. So I just, screwed those up so if I want to go back and fix that I can go back in a minute and fix it. So I'll right click, select the 24 by 48, fence it and go back and re-fence those in. And now they're back the way they should be. Okay, so we have beams, we have sizes, we have columns, we have sizes, we hope. We're going to need something on the perimeter to define the perimeter of our building. So we have to put a beam in there. So since the slab spans one way, uh, we don't have to put in a 24 by 36 out here. We could just leave the slab edge there because it will span from here to here. So we don't need any. Theoretically, we don't need any support. So we could put in a fake beam. It's called another beam. Yeah. Which one's the icon to show the size again? Which is what? Which one's the icon to show the size? To show the size? It's this little icon. You can go up here to view. Uh, maybe you can. Where is it? Show sizes under options is here. Okay. Or you can see this button right here. Yep. 
that button that has a magnifying glass on the size, I can turn it off or I can click it on. Okay. I think it, so we can put a fake beam out here if we want, and that's called another beam. So instead of concrete, we can just click on other if we want, or we could put a concrete beam out there. Um, From a mass standpoint, uh, let's see, what are we going to get here? If we go to other, do we have property tables? No, there's no property tables. So it's not going to mass out this beam at all. Lay out beams, add on grid. And now we have a, what's called another beam. So this isn't steel, this isn't concrete. It just puts in the modulus of elasticity, the unit weight, Poisson ratio. And we'll call it a gravity beam and we'll just fence it in here. And they show up as green. size those beams. All right, so we got beams, columns. We need to define the perimeter of the building. And so we need a slab edge. Uh, do we have to have those other beams? You have to have some type of beam element here. All right. Because we're going to assign a slab edge and it's looking for some type of mm. element here. So. We could have put a concrete beam, we could have put a steel beam, but we have to have something. All right. Okay. Otherwise, it's not going to like us. All right. So, layout, slab edge. So, we're going to go slab. And over here to slab edge. Uh, right there. And we have some choices. We can lay out the slab edges by clicking here and drawing a line up there. We can have the program put it all around the perimeter automatically, which is right now we've got the slab overhang. So usually, especially when you have a steel building, you can have some metal deck out here. Usually there's some type of overhang. And the program defaults to 12 inches outside the building. I mean, you can define it as zero right on the center of the beam, but usually you have to at least go, you know, to the edge of the flange. So the program defaults to 12 inches. You can make it whatever, but 12 inches is a pretty good number for concrete, so. We can click on whole perimeter and it's going to put a green line around the whole perimeter of the building, assuming we've got all our beams set up on the perimeter. So I'm just going to click whole perimeter. And now we've defined the slab edge, the limits of our floor. All right, questions? We have to have a slab edge because we're going to now define a decking in here and it needs to know how far to extend it out to the edges. So if you don't have a slab edge and you try to find a deck, it's not going to let you do it. Alright, so layout, slab, you can define openings, penetrations, a deck assign. We're going to want to do deck assign so we're going to have to have it, some decks so we could have concrete on metal deck or we could just have concrete or we could just have bare steel decks so let's go to decking uh, concrete slab system we got composite floors you know what composite is steel with metal deck or metal deck with concrete fill non-composite would be just Con uh, metal deck by itself, no concrete. And now we've got concrete just by itself, so we'll go concrete. 
we'll call it floor, I don't know. And I uh, call it, uh, what are we spinning? 30 feet, so an inch slab. This isn't going to matter because it's not, we've already told the program don't calculate slab loads, but we'll put it in here for diaphragm. It's around the same thing else. So we're going to add that as a floor. And now that we have a deck type, we can assign a deck to it. So again, this button is slab layout. Click it. Mm -hmm. And then this purple thing is deck assign. Again, you can get there by going layout, slab, deck assign. We want a one-way slab going left and right. We've got an arrow that shows it left and right. Uh, it's not composite, it's non, not non-composite, it's concrete, so we'll click there. And there's our deck. And we want this over the whole floor. So uh, we could define different areas of different deck types, but since we want the whole floor, we'll click that. And you can see that it's put in some purple lines, meaning it's spanning this way, okay? So to get the load to this beam, it's going to go halfway over trib width, halfway over, take that amount of slab and stick it on that beam. All right, so we've got beams, columns, slab edge, decking. Next thing is loads, right? You guys want to take a break? Been here for an hour. Do that till when you want to go five after. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Let's relax. Stand up. Stretch. Calisthenics. <laughs>